Hi, in this video I'm going to take a look at three ways to put this drum part that you just heard a little bit more on the grid. So let's go! So if you've seen more recent videos on this channel, then you know that I have done a couple of videos on Cubase and its tempo and audio stretching related functionality. And this is yet another installment in that series, and I've even bundled those tempo related videos in a YouTube playlist, which I will link in the description of this video. Now this is a project that I already played a bit in the intro of this video. It's a drum track from a song called Woman by my band The Wash. And we recorded and released this track quite a couple of years ago already. And I'm using it as an example in this Cubase project because this is one of the tracks that recorded live drums on. And I'm not so much using it as an example because it is not tight enough. Because we didn't actually use any drum quantization or tempo detection or correction on this track when we released it. But it's just a nice example of what you can do with a live recorded drum multi-track. And I'm not saying that you always need to put drums on the grid, certainly not, but there are situations in which you might have to. For example, if the drum tracks are part of a more electronic style of music, where everything is gridded, or you even have drum loops in there as well, then it might be nice or even necessary to even grid the acoustically recorded drums. In any way, I think it's good to know how to do it. So let's start with the first way to do this. In this project you see all the different drum parts. We have a mono overhead, we have a stereo overhead pair, two toms, snare top, snare bottom, kick drum, kick sub, and a hi-hat microphone. And the first thing to do is to put all these tracks in a folder. So we select all the tracks and we right click, move select the tracks in new folder. Then we can name the folder drums. And since we're now going to edit these drums, we want to turn on group editing with this button so that anything we do to any of these tracks will also be done to the other tracks. So this way we can make sure that all these tracks stay in sync. For example, if we move or stretch parts of these tracks. Now the first technique I'm going to show you is when you only want to correct a couple of notes or maybe a couple of measures and not actually grid every beat or every measure exactly. And that's actually a very worthwhile technique that sounds more natural and organic than any of the other methods that I'm going to show you. So let's for example find a measure in which a beat is not exactly on the beat and that we want to correct. For example, over here on this beat, you can see that everything is a little bit more behind the beat than elsewhere. So let's imagine that we want to correct this measure. But first of all, I'm going to create a new track version to make sure that I can easily get back to the previous situation. And if you want to know how I use track versions in my editing workflow, I have a separate video on that, which I'll link at the end of this one. But now back to this measure, I basically want to shift this whole part here a little bit forward so that at least these hits are more on the beat exactly. So in order to do that, I'm going to split the tracks over here. And as you can see, because I've enabled group editing, all tracks are split at the same location. Then I'm going to split the tracks over here as well. And then if I go back to object selection, I can do Control Alt and then select. And that means we are now slip editing. So I can just drag this whole part left and right as much as I want without actually needing to move any of these audio events. So let me put this right on the beat and release it. Now I just noticed that these cut points are a bit tight because I want to crossfade them now. So I can still move these a little bit. This one as well. And I can now select these two parts and push X to crossfade. And I can do the same thing over here push X to crossfade. And we have a nicely aligned hit here of the snare on the fourth beat of measure 11. So that's one way to correct individual hits or individual measures or parts of measures to align more on the grid, if necessary, of course. But let's now move on to method two using more general drum track quantization. Okay, let's first go back to our unedited version, version one, and make another copy of this. And let's move back to the beginning of the track and zoom in on that a bit. Because in order for the quantization features to work, we first have to make sure that the most important tracks that we want to use for quantizing on have their hit points set correctly. And if you don't know exactly what hit points are, you can check out my other videos on tempo editing. But in short, the hit points basically indicate which transients are important in a certain track. And Cubase can use these important transients for quantizing. Now one of the most important elements that I want to have on the grid is the kick track. So I need to turn off group editing here for a second. So let's open the kick track in the sample editor and have a short listen. 
So what you're seeing here is that the hit points, those vertical lines, they also occur on the snare. For example, the third hit here is a snare and not a kick. So I want to get rid of those hit points on the snare. And I can do that by selecting edit hit points here and then adjusting the threshold so that the snare hits are excluded. Now we have to make sure that that works for most of the track and that seems to be okay. So now we have set the hit points on the kick track. Now I want to do the same thing for the snare track and I'll use the snare top track to define the hit points for the snare. Let's have a listen over here. You can see that the hit points are now also set to where you hear the hi-hat. So let's again edit hit points here and adjust the threshold so that the hi-hat does not provide any of the hit points. And I think these are very much the snare hits. Okay, now I want to turn group editing back on and I can open the quantize panel on top here. If I click on one of the tracks in the group, you can see that the quantize panel changes a bit and it allows me to set over here which hit points of which tracks I want to use for quantization. Well, definitely not overheads, but I want to use the kick for quantization. And you see when I do that on the kick track over here, you see the red hit points that will be used for quantization. And I also want to use the snare track, but with a slightly lower priority. So that if there's a simultaneous hit of the kick and the snare, the kick hit will be used for quantization and not the snare hit. Now currently the quantize panel is set to use slices. There's another way that you can set the quantize panel and that's to use audio warp, but that'll be my next way to do this. Let's first start with slices. And especially the offset here determines exactly where the slices will be done. So you can see over here like how far the slices will be done from the actual hits. So I think about 10 is probably okay. If I zoom in a bit, you can see that there's still some room for crossfading the slices later on. So let's slice the audio. And as you can see, Cubase has now created audio slices for every hit point that we indicated on those snare top and kick tracks. Now, if you don't like the way Cubase has done that, you can also reset it here and choose other settings and re-slice. But I think this is okay. Now, the next part of the quantize panel is about how to quantize these slices. So how to move them on the beat and especially on which beats do you want to move them? So those kick hits are basically on eight notes. So let's leave this on eight notes for now and see what happens if we quantize all those slices to eight notes. Now again, you can choose audio war, but I'm not going to this time. I'm going to use hard quantize. You can also turn on soft quantize here, like I just showed you. And then you can determine how much the audio will be shifted towards the nearest eight note. For example, 90% is almost full quantization, but I'm going to leave it to hard quantization. So everything will be shifted to exactly the nearest eight note. And if I push quantize, this happens. Now, due to the quantization, Cubase has moved some of the slices so that gaps now exist between some of the slices. And we can fill most of those gaps by using the crossfade button over here. So let's push that one. And right now, if we zoom in a bit, you can see that Cubase has put in nice crossfades so that slices do no longer contain gaps. You can also move those slices if you want to, if they're, for example, partly on the beats or you can shorten their length or even edit what kind of fades are used. And for drums, it usually sounds nice to use equal power. So let's select that. And you see that all the crossfades have now been adjusted to equal power. Now, one thing that has happened now as well, and this is what you can see over here, is that because some of those drums, and I think it was the snare drum, actually played on 16th notes or, or maybe even on 32nd notes, Cubase has moved all those slices to the nearest eight note, meaning that, yeah, there's a big gap here that basically has totally changed the fill that the drummer played over here. Now, in order to correct that, there's a couple of ways that we can do that. For example, if I go back a couple of steps by undoing, I'm now back in the situation where we already sliced the audio, but we didn't quantize it yet. I can also set the quantize value to 30 second notes. And if I then select all the tracks again and push quantize, you can see that the 30 second notes of the snare are now not put all on top of each other. And I can push crossfade and they're basically all kept where I want to.
However, this also means that some of the other kick and snare hits may have been moved to the wrong 32nd note because I wanted to move them to exactly the eighth note. So let's again undo this. This is the situation just before quantizing. Let's again do an eighth note quantization, quantize, crossfade. You can also solve this by just getting rid of these parts and then just extending the fill to where it was before and selecting and manually crossfading in between there. So let's have a listen to how this sounds all quantized to the grid of eight notes. Yeah, so yeah, the kick and snare have definitely been put on the grid now. But I do think this part has now lost some of its original feel. So I would not actually use this type of quantization on this part. So let's now move on to the third method of putting this drum track more on the grid. So I'm again starting from a new track version of the drum recording. And the third method is using audio warp for quantization in the quantization panel. But before we do that, I first want to correct some of the hit points in that snare top track. So I want to make sure that I only get the snare hit points in here that I want to move to the eight notes. So let's remove all snare hit points, which are not on eight notes. So you click edit hit points and then you lock a hit point and then you can disable it. This one too, and this one too actually. So now I can enable group editing again and open the quantization panel and select one of these tracks. I again want to quantize on the kick with highest priority and then on the snare top track. And now I can turn on audio warp quantize. And you see that now the slice setting here is gone. And I get a create button to create warp markers at the hit points. So let's do that. And you can now see the white lines. Those are the warp markers that have been created. And again, they are on the snare hits and the kick hits. You see that audio warp has also been enabled in the quantize settings part of this panel. And I again can choose here whether I want to hard quantize or just part of the way. But let's quantize hard again. Let's push quantize. And now all the warp markers have been moved to eight notes. And there's no audio slices, so you don't need to do any crossfades. Basically the audio between the warp markers has just been stretched to the nearest eight note within the measure. So let's have a listen to that. Now you may feel this method is a bit easier because you don't have to do any slicing or crossfades, but there's one important difference, and that's the fact that the phase relationship between the tracks is not maintained when this technique is used. So due to the fact that the audio is stretched on those various tracks, the drums can get out of phase with each other, so you can actually hear it. So all in all, my favorite ways of putting drums on the grid are in the order that I presented them to you. Just use slip editing on the beats or part of the measure that you want to move and put on the grid. If you really want to do quantization for the whole track, I would use slices and audio warp on multi-track drum recordings I would typically not use. Now, as always, if you like this video for the YouTube algorithm, please tell your friends about it, share it, give it a like, a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon so you know when I post another video. And if you want to support the channel even more, please buy something with the affiliate links in the description. I will get a small commission on your purchase without any extra cost to you. And in all of this drum editing and other audio editing that you're doing in your projects, I think it's very important to be able to quickly go back to a previous defined state of your edit. And I have a way to use track versions for exactly just that, which I show you in this video. Check it out, enjoy, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.